awesome God. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness to us. We are so blessed that you are our God. That no man is our God, but you are our God. Thank you for another opportunity. Father, I go to fellowship with you and with each other. What a service we are having. Thank you for the prophetic prayers. Thank you for the, for the praise and worship, fountain of praise. Thank you, Lord God, for, for the awesome testimonies. We are just so grateful. It's evidence of your hand at work in our lives. And we pray, Father God, long may it continue that only your hand, not the hand of man, not the hand of the enemy, will be seen in our lives. Thank you, Daddy, for everything. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. A very good afternoon to you, Kingdom Gospel Church, and indeed our friends who are joining us on Facebook as we've gone live streaming and those who watch us later on YouTube. However you are connected, the Lord bless you and enrich your life with his word now as you come to this hour of preaching. The service has been on for over an hour. God has been doing awesome things, but the, at this time we we'll share the word, we'd like you to participate and join with us. So please give God your attention, give those people your attention as he's teaching us a new topic today, a series I must say, today being part one on foundations. Foundations. What are foundations? What is foundation? Basically roots. Have you got roots? Have I got roots? Have we as a family, have we as a church, do we have roots? Roots in what? We begin this conversation this morning in, in um, this, the book of Psalms, chapter 11, verse number 1 to 3. Psalms 11, 1 to 3. Amen. Let me, let me read it to you from my New King James Version of the Holy Bible. You know me. I use the King, New King James. Love the New King James. Amen. Thank God for the version you like. And so in, in Psalms 11, verses 1 to 3, you're reading your Bibles. In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to the mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Ah. What a question, verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Let me remind us that foundations are the fundamental aspects, or what you may call the beginning and the very basic aspects of any building or structure. Whether it be a house, it be a, a, a conference center, it be a hotel, it be a stadium, whatever it is, any structure, any building. Foundations are the fundamental aspects of it, the very basics. It's where the work began, begins, I beg your pardon. They are the basics or the essentials that must be in place before any building or structure can be erected or built. Foundations are important for people like us, you and I, for the church, for family, for the individual person or believer, because it becomes the anchor, the place that helps to rest our faith or the thing that helps to rest our faith in Almighty God during tough times. You can destroy everything in a building or a house or a structure Amen. But if you still have the foundation intact, you can rebuild again on top of that same foundation. But if the foundations are destroyed, guess what? It's a completely new build. You cannot salvage anything. And that is, I believe, is one of the reasons of the, the, you know, why we're having this conversation in the Holy Ghost today. Foundations or your roots, my roots. How strong are they? Or how feeble are they? Are they strong? Are they weak? Are they tired? Or are they getting stronger and stronger by the day as you go and see Matthew in the faith, in the marriage between you and your husband, you and the wife, in your, as a parent or in your education? How strong, how weak are your roots? The roots determine everything. The foundation determines how high you can build and the capacity to which you can build and the maximum weight you can carry. Everything comes back down to what foundation or the roots. And so the scripture says, Psalm 11, verse 1, in the Lord I put my trust. Where is your trust, people of God? To you, O oh man, O oh woman, listen, what me? Well, whom have you put your trust? In man, in your employer, in the doctors? Well, yes, the Lord can use them. But ultimately, I, I suggest and I encourage us that our faith or trust should be in the Lord. 
in the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bear to your mountain? Why should I run? Why should I flee? When my faith is in Almighty God, God who made us with us, God who knows everything, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, is everything and is in everything. Where am I going to run? Why should I run? When my faith is in God, is it sickness? Is it the, is it the needs of unemployment? Is it all oh, the instability in the world, in politics, in government, in all over the world? Is it the sickness? Whatever it is, I have put my faith and my trust in God. Why should I go into hiding? Why should I flee? And then I love verse number two. He says, look, for look, 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 look. I mean, be vigilant. Come, understand. The wicked bend their bow. Well, in Bible days, I mean, the weapons of, the standard weapons of warfare was the bow and the arrow and the spears and the javelins, and you had your, your shield to, to, to defend, and of course, the, the spear, or, or, you know, to, to, to attack. Or the sword, should I say, as well, to attack. So the bow, the arrow, you know, archers, they use them. It was common weapon. And so the psalm is here, is using the weapon of their of their of, 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 of their day. Say, for look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready on the arrow, on the string, that they may shoot. And the Bible says secretly, meaning in darkness, covertly. Oh, they won't do it in the day, in full broad daylight. No, 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 no. They will do it under the cloak, the blanket, the canopy of darkness. You know, people will secretly meet to plan. You know, the Bible talks about hosts, Ephesians 6, of spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. People who host meetings and conferences on how they can destroy other people in secret while you are going about your daily life, daily activities, <laughs> enjoying your life. There are people preparing to attack secretly in darkness. Matthew 13 tells us a parable about the kingdom, how a rich man so so wheat in the daytime, but at night time, under the cloak of the darkness of the night, when men were asleep, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. Why? To destroy the wheat. Church, look, the Bible says, understand there's wickedness out there. And wicked people, agents of wickedness, who are determined. You living life, living large, living big, going about your regular activities, your routine. But there are forces. For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready the arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly without your knowledge. Amen. That is why we must have good roots, sure foundations that are immovable, that will not, that will not break or buckle. Under the pressure or the or the or the or the or the, or the stress or the tension, under the heat of the attack from the enemy. For look, the wicked bend their bow and make ready to and make ready on the arrow on the stream that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. Upright, you are righteous. There's no guile in you, there's no deceit in you. You are upright before God and before man. Why would they want to shoot at you? Why would they want to attack you? They won't inform you. But the Bible says, for look. And then we come to verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous? You are still righteous. You are still born again a believer. But you must have sure, immovable foundations. Your roots in God must be strong. That is why he began by saying in verse 1, in the Lord I put my trust. That's the anchor. That's my root. That rests me in God. So no matter the pressure, no matter the fiery dust, no matter the kind of sickness, no matter what the enemy throws at me, I will not flee into hiding to a mountain because I am sure my God will come through for me. May that be your testimony and my testimony in the name of our Savior, King Jesus. Come on, somebody, shout a big amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so fundamentally, church, we must have foundations. Basic, amen. Nobody builds <laughs> top to bottom. You build bottom up. And what you lay down, usually buried, the time is what we see on the outside. Oh, Father, thank you.
what, come on, can I, let me just, one of the key characteristics of foundations are they are buried in the ground, not visible to the naked eyes, not visible. If you can understand this principle, church, it's what Jesus says, if when you want to pray, go secretly, Matthew chapter 6, and pray to your father who sees in secret. The father who meets with you and sees in secret shall reward you in the open. So your blessings we see in the outside, in the public, the work is done in the secret place. That is why Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow. It's what you do, buried, hidden, secret, that God rewards in the public. So your foundation can never be seen, amen, to the naked eyes. But God, who knows that you anchor in him, your hope and your faith is in him, will reward you publicly. So we must do what? Ensure that we have the right foundation. Later in the series, we talk about the building blocks for the right foundation. But in the meantime, let me interest you by saying to somebody that God works with foundation. The psalmist says to us in Psalm 11, verse 1, in the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, run, flee as a bed to your mountain? What am I running to? Amen. I go to sleep and I sleep all of them because Psalm 127 says he gives sleep to his beloved. Why should I stay awake? No, 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 no. I go to bed because Psalm 121, he never sleeps no slumber. Psalm 122 as well. He never sleeps no slumber. So why should I stay awake? Why should I? I can stay awake to pray. But when I finish prayer, I go to bed and sleep and I sleep well. Because I have put my trust in the Lord my God. Church, child of God, man of God, one of God, the you family of God. Church, KGC, can we say this, that in the Lord we put our trust? Ah, foundations, roots, very key. Remember, verse 2, I can't, seem to, I can't seem to get away from this, church. For look, have an understanding. The wicked bring their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string. That they may shoot secretly, it means in darkness at the upright. So just for being right with God, you attract wickedness. <laughs> you convict them because you are working right with God and they are not living right with God and they will attack you secretly. How they will attack, I don't know. But surely they will. And so we must have sure foundations. I'm already concluded, amen? I won't advise or encourage or preach or pray that we build shabby or shallow, weak foundations because your foundations will determine how the capacity of your building. There are some hotels you go to, conference centers, some venues, only a thousand people, some 500, some 3,000, some five. So, so the stronger, the bigger, the better the foundation is, the more capacity. And so the more you trust God, you, the more, God can build you, mighty man of woman, mighty, sorry, mighty man of God, mighty woman of God, mighty man, whatever champion, hero, whatever it is. Read Hebrews 11, the, the heroes and the heroines of faith. To give us a good example of those who had strong foundation, who, who refused to enjoy the passing pleasures of this world. Rather, they chose to suffer reproach and affliction with the children of Israel because they saw far into the future a city whose builder and maker, not man, but God himself. Ah. So God works with foundations. Let, let me interest you. Jesus is teaching in, in, in the parable of the sower. He talks very bluntly and boldly about foundation. Oh, yes. Allow me to read to you from Mark chapter 4. Verses 1 to 20. We don't have to read everything, but quickly, let's go to Mark chapter number 4. About the parable of the sower. I'm sure you know the parable. So what? It's about the word. Amen. So the word must be, oh my God. The word must be. The word must be. 
city will brand the ecc in the adosia the word must be we build foundation we build by the word amen your faith your trust comes from what you know what is revealed to you you know from the word of god if you don't ah, let's let's just read this parable and again in mark chapter 4 verse 1 he began to teach by the sea and and, and a great multitude was gathered to him so he got into a boat and sat in, in it sat in it in the sea and the whole multitude of people was on the land facing the sea and 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 he taught them many things in parables you know and he said to them in his teaching listen he said he saw i went out to sow and, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside amen some, some seed fell by the wayside and and the best of the air came out and devoured it and some on, fell on stony ground and, and, and it did not have much earth and immediately sprang up because it had no depth of air. But when the sun was up, it was crushed, and because it had no root, it withered. That's the second seed. The third, and so some fell among thorns, and, and, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a, a, a crop, a harvest sprang up, that is, increased and produced some 30 fold, some 60, and some 100. And then he said to them, he who has ears, let him hear. Amen. Please just jump, jump down to verse number 13. Let's cut it short from verse number 13. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the world. Amen. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and does what? Takes the word that was sown in their hearts. These lacrosse are the ones stone on stony ground. Now hear this church. Who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. They have no root, no foundation in themselves. And so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the world's sake, the very same word they received and were excited and glad and happy about. When persecution, that is the wicked now shooting arrows at them, amen, persecuting them, the pressure, the stress, the frustration, the heat, of the attack. So when tribulation or persecution arises for the world's sake, immediately they will stumble. Why? If they stumble, go back. Verse 17. And they have no roots in themselves. They got the word of God quite right. They were happy about the promises and the prophecies. Okay. But when tribulation comes, persecution on account of the same word that they were happy and excited about, what happened? They stumbled, they crumbled because they had no foundation. Ah, somebody's hearing it now. I believe God. Just as I'm hearing the Lord, I believe you're hearing God. This is the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4. If you roll back to Mark chapter 3, I don't think you will see Jesus, amen, uh, uh, teaching the parable. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't think we see him teaching a parable in Mark chapter 3. If we go to Mark chapter 2, I don't think we see him teaching another parable. Huh? Is he the novice name for giving season all that? Mark chapter 1 is about his baptism and everything else. But if you go to Mark chapter 4, you see him teaching this great parable. Amen. Parable of what? The word of God. He's teaching us a great lesson. The place and the import and the importance of the word in the life of the believer, the life of the family, of people who say they are Christians, and the life of the church. We cannot substitute the world for entertainment or for anything else. It must never be watered down because in the world is our anchor, our hope. In the world is our root. In the world is our 
foundation. So that when the persecution comes, when the tribulation comes, when the pressure is on us, the word of God that is in us sustains us. So I'm making the point that God works with foundations. And so what kind of texture is your foundation? My foundation or our foundation, our collective foundation, as a local assembly, as a church, what is the texture? Is it just the entertainment and the songs and the singing? God is good Sunday morning? Ah. Or the word. I'm, I'm grateful to God that we get excited about preaching. I hope somebody's getting excited about this preaching. You're not getting bored, amen. <laughs> hope I'm not boring anybody. But it should be a lot more than excitement. Like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17. Go back, search the scriptures. In doing so, you convince yourself that what Pastor Son is preaching this morning is true. And then you can do what wrong with it. That you must have deep roots. A deep foundation in God, made up of the word, revelation. Amen. Listen, let me say this ahead of time. The Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures, that document we call the Bible. Amen. It's the revealed word of God. As God worked with men and women across ages and times before now. Amen. And they put pen to paper the document for us. Their relations with their experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All documented so that we will learn lessons. Romans 15. Whatever was written before was written for our learning so that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. As it was with Abraham and the great men and women who walked with God and succeeded and made it, we too can in the mighty name of the Lord. That is why we have the reference of this great book we call the Holy Bible. Amen. <laughs> I think it's Romans 15, verse number four. Let me, find, let me see if I can find it and read it out to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, King Jesus. God will bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. For whatever things, Romans 15, verse four, for whatever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That is why you have the Bible. Not to put it under your bed at night and sleep. Amen. No, no, no. That as you read and research, as you study, hope rises. Faith and trust in God, which really is your root or your foundation in God. Oh, let me say to somebody, people of God, God works with foundation. And so we see the, sec the second seed, the second seed. In, in fact, when you use the word seed, it's, it's not just seed as in the, as in, it's about people. Four kinds of people. They hear the word, vamush, nothing. They hear the word, they're excited. When there's pressure, when there's persecution, or that kind of reward, they crumble. You don't see them in church anymore. They vamush. There's a third set of people. They hear the word, they want to among thorns, but they are too busy doing all kinds of things, pursuing popularity and fame. Oh, they come to church, they still pray, but the word they receive is not profitable. And so God has no testimony from them. But the fourth kind of people, they hear the word with a noble heart. They keep the word and they walk with the word, with the Holy Spirit and the bare fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold. That's where God gets testimony. Of the four kinds of people, four kinds of soils, amen. The first three, not a thing. But the fourth one, may you and I be in that category that we hear the word and we walk with the word by the Holy Ghost and we bore fruit unto God, 30, 60. And hundred, as God gave us the ability to bear fruit in the mighty, mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me shout a big amen to the Lamb of God. And so, let me also interested that to say, to people of God, that God works with foundations. Why do I say so? The earth has foundations. The earth is founded on waters, called out of waters, but founded as God measured. Let me show you some scriptures here. Amen. God works with foundations. He saw the parable of the soul. The earth has foundations. The earth is founded, called out of water. As a matter of fact, we live in this big global island, you know? And he said, let the waters be gathered. Let the earth appear. Genesis 1. I'm sure you know that. Job 38, verse 3 to 5. Now prepare yourself like a man. God speaks to, to Job. I will question you and you shall answer me. Verse 4. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? There you go. The earth has foundations. Tell me if you have understanding. 
verse 5. Who determined the, the measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched out the line upon it? Psalm 104, verse number 5. The Bible teaches us this. You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. And that gives us a clue that with foundations, we are not, with the right foundation, should I say, we are not supposed to be moved forever. So our testimony must not change. Once a believer, always a believer. Once born again, a man should be born again fully. Once saved, you should always be saved. But, 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 we've got to be careful. Amen. To maintain and to ensure that we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, you are saved, you have been saved, and you shall be saved. Amen. I won't go into the, the, the theology around salvation. And I have taught before, you can be saved now, but I pray not. Somebody saved now, I pray not, can lose their salvation in time ahead. Yes, many have missed the way. And so if you believe one saved or received, please, we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jehovah. Isaiah chapter 48, verse, verse number 13. Indeed, the, 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 the Bible says, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth. My hand has laid the foundation of the earth. And my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. That is our God. God is too big, church. There should be no debate, argument, or contention concerning God in our lives. Uh -uh. Nothing should be able to challenge God in our lives. God is too big. Indeed, Isaiah 48, 13, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth. My right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. The planet earth answers to God. That is the God we serve. The world may do the things they want to do. Let's not be moved. I don't even argue anymore. As a young believer, I used to almost take up arms and argue. Ah, you lose sleep. No, 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 no. You know the truth. The truth will fight for us and defend itself. The bitter about the truth is it's always the truth. No matter how they color it or how they try to change it, truth will always be truth. That is why it's called the truth. And I remember my scriptures, John 14, 6, I am the way the truth and the life. No more comment under the Father except through me. <laughs> what a foundation. Listen, let me let me continue, amen. God wants his foundations. Why? Why do I say that? Because his throne has foundations. So God, who teaches us in the parable that about foundations of, listen, I, I didn't quite, listen, that parable, that second seed, is a lot of us. Amen. A lot of us. We're excited about God and his word. But when the testing comes, let's be honest, church. Come on, let's be honest. Amen, let's be honest. That is why Jesus looked at his disciples. Where is your faith? He asked them. In the boat with them. Oh, there's tempest in the sea. The waters overlapping and lapping. The waves rising high. And seasoned fishermen are crying like babies as though they were going to perish. And they run to Jesus in the lower deck of the, of the boat and say, Master, Master, do you not care that we perish? He wakes up, I believe, rubs his eyes, comes to the deck, upper deck, stands and rebukes. And there's this calmness. And he turns to them and asks them, where is your faith? In a moment of trial, looking at the elements of, of the waters as they were lapping, what happens? They lost their faith. You wonder, where? is the foundation. That is the message, church. Remember the secret? Pe you know, the people, the wicked, tend to shoot secretly at you and me and us because we're right with God, upright in our heart, loving God, loving each other. Amen. Of no, no, not, of not, of, not of our doing, but being jealous and envious and, 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 and you name it, wanting to have what we have, but no one to pay the price we've paid. They, they, listen, it's night and day, 24 hours. Human nature, good and bad. God, devil, amen, always there. But we must look and, and be aware that they are there. Apostle Peter says, be sober, 
the vigilant, your adversary, your enemy, the devil walks about like a, a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I, and I pray that he will not come near us or devour us in Jesus' name. God works with foundations. When you have the foundations, if they are right, no matter what the enemy throws at you, throws at us, as a church, as individual family, it would not work. Hallelujah. His throne has foundations. Amen. Let me interest you with a couple of scriptures here. Father, we thank you. Amen. From the Psalms again. Jehovah will bless your name. Psalm 89, I believe. Verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Psalm 97, verse number 2. Amen. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteous and justice. Again. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. His throne has foundations. The earth is for he form, he made foundations for. How can we then not have foundations? Amen. Finally, God worked with foundations. Jesus cursed the fig tree. Mark eleven twenty. Guess where the, the fig tree began to die from? Mm -hmm. Yes, you guessed right. Mark eleven twenty. And as they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, from the foundation. And so here I share with you scriptures to, to evidence what I'm saying, that God works with foundations. He wants us to develop the right foundation, sure foundation in him that will be immovable, immovable, always abounding in the faith, growing stronger through the high and the low, through the thick and the thin, through the day and the night, through seasons in and seasons out. God wants us to develop the right foundation. If I go back to uh, uh, Psalm 11, in you, O Lord, I put my trust. So that when the enemy is shooting arrows, whatever is shooting at me, <laughs> I won't flee. You won't flee either. Because we know we are built or founded on the Lord himself. Let me prepare to close it. Amen. Let me just complete what I was saying in, about foundations, the nature of foundations. I'll continue next Sunday. There's a lot more to go. Amen. <laughs> Number one about foundation, characteristic of foundation, they're actually not seen. They are in the ground, buried, not visible to the naked eye. And I say to you that every success is actually born in the womb somewhere in the secret places underground, not seen by the naked eyes. All of the athletes that you celebrate and, and say, oh, you seem bold and you name me the big basketballers, the footballers, amen. They train when nobody's watching. What you see is the evidence and the result of work done in training when the public is not watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we celebrate them outside. Oh, great man. What a talent. What a celebrity. What, what great skill. What great ability. What, come on. We're commanding millions of, of pounds or dollars, whatever the, in the context may be. But the work for you to see that show on the outside is training, hours of training and hard work not seen. And so your foundation will determine what the world will see. Whether it's a 30,000 seater, capacity stadium, conference center, or a house with 12, you, you don't lay a foundation for a two bedroom house and build a 12 bedroom house. No, no, because the structure will collapse because the foundation is not laid or built for a 12 bed house. So your foundation determines how high it can go and how wide. Amen. You want to go far in the Lord? Well, build the right foundation with the help of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Nature of foundations. Number two, everything else is built on it. The foundations has no choice. I'm here to see a foundation that says, oh, no, 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 don't build this house on me. Don't put the wall on me. Don't put the windows. No, no, no. The foundation takes the weight of everything else. Amen. Are you building your foundation 
that no matter the weight of your responsibility, pastor, as a CEO, or a C-suite member in some international corporation, multinational corporation, or as a, or as a, as a, or a celebrity of, you know, whatever you, you, you are, you know, preacher, whatever, do you have the foundation to be able to build on top? Number three, the foundation carries the weight of everything else. There's no choice. Amen. The weight. Number four, nobody celeb cele cele celebrates foundation. Nah. Usually not celebrated. Like, yo, oh, somebody says, look at that house. What a beautiful house. Look at that hotel. You see the walls, you see the fences, you see, but there's a foundation that's keeping everything up and standing and looking good. Usually, if you go to the foundation, they are not even plastered and even painted, not even cemented. It's just bricks and pillars, raw bricks and pillars buried on the ground. You see the carpet, oh, beautiful carpet. What, look at the floor tiles. We celebrate everything else but foundation. Amen. Sometimes, church, when you're not celebrated, uh -uh, don't let it bother you. Their foundation. There are people who, are, as people were saying to us, giving the testimony of, of the church back home in Nigeria, foundation pioneers. Like you today, you are pioneers in Kingdom Gospel Church. And I believe God. We do. We pray that God will answer us that in time to come soon. And I believe very soon, as the hundreds and thousands begin to come. Amen. We may not celebrate you. We welcome them. We welcome plaques and all kinds of things. What about you? Listen, heaven knows you. And heaven will celebrate you. He celebrates you. Continue to celebrate God because without your prayers, your intercession, without your tithes and offering, without your, your commitment, we won't be where we are. So I celebrate you as foundational members of this great house. Come on. And I bless God for your lives. Hallelujah. For every marriage, thank God for Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. The man and the woman are pillars at the foundation. Thank God for the children. They come out with degrees and have good jobs and everything. But go back. The father and the mother, they pay the price. Some of us working so many jobs. Thank God for Vivian. She was saying, don't know which way to go. All my time. That is because Vivian, you are a foundation. And for our young sisters, going to, into marital blessing soon. I believe soon. Amen. Very soon. That is why the enemy was trying to attack you. Sis, very soon. The story is going to be glorious. Remember, as you go into that holy matrimony with that young man, that prince, amen, you are foundation for the greatness that will comfort in that family. I hope somebody's hearing the Lord this, this afternoon. Number, where are we? Amen, number five. Foundation can determine the value and the space on the structure. If the foundation is strong, the structure will be strong, and so the value will be high. But if the foundation is weak, I have had the opportunity to God be the glory of being in, in real estate. And so we go out and look at properties. Amen. One of the keys we look for is the foundation. Subsidence. Is it weak? If it is weak, the value of that property drops. Because any shake in any movement of the earth is collapsing. So the foundation determines the value. Amen. Number six, nature. If, if the foundation moves, <laughs> everything collapses if the foundation moves. Imagine your house, a hotel, the foundation shifts. The building trying to, in an attempt to shift as this foundation shifts, begin to lopside and it collapses. Amen? Church, let me tell us, foundations are key and very important. As I close it, amen? Foundations are important. Why do I say so? Four reasons quickly share with you. <laughs> Hallelujah, church. Four reasons I quickly share with you. Number one, they enable any structure to be stable. Your stability will be determined by your, your root. Amen. Your stability. In fact, your root determines your life because it's from your root, like a tree. You draw nutrients from the ground. You draw life. Foundations are super important. Number two, why do I say they're important? They determine the stress, the load, the body, the responsibility, the weight that the structure can carry. 
you cannot carry any more than your, your foundation can carry. Amen. We, some 30 can handle, some 60 can handle, some 100. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25, he, 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 gave, he gave talents, he gave one to one, he gave two to another, he gave five to another according to their ability. So your structure, your sorry, your foundation determines your ability or not. That is why they're important. Number three, they help your structure to achieve longevity. If you want to stay strong and stay long, develop huge, strong foundations. And finally, number four, why are they so important? Because they determine the survival and the success of the building of the structure. You cannot succeed without the right foundation. Oh, you cannot survive without the right foundation. And foundations differ. And I pray today, as I bring it to a close, I believe you heard the word of God. May your foundation and mine and us as a family and as individuals and as, and as a church be strong and solid to the degree we want to grow, amen, and run and live. May our foundation carry us through every day, amen, every week, every month, every year, every decade, century, if the Lord wills. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Church, this message is key. And I pray you take it to heart and run with it. Amen. Go back. It will be on our channel on YouTube, KGC London. Just search Kingdom Gospel Church London, KGC London. Amen. Foundations are key to our survival, our stability, and our success. The right foundation. Oh, the right texture. We see us overcome, amen, and still stand when the attacks of the enemy have come and blown away. Whether it's the, it's the wind of adversity, whether it's the rain of evil, or whether it's the flood, amen, of wickedness, amen. Have we the not to stand on the right foundation? We shall all be standing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Church, I commit and I commend this word of God to you. Please, is the word of God to us on this day. May the Lord help us to have an understanding of foundations and so to develop the right one so that when the enemy comes with his bows and arrows and everything he has in the secret in darkness, amen, it shall be for us stepping stones to greater testimonies in Jesus. Name. Hey, it's been a joy and a pleasure as always. I'm excited about the world you can tell. Amen. <laughs> I live for this. The word of God and to be able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to share this great message, amen, that there is no name that is given under heaven among men by which we shall be saved except by the one name of Jesus the Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you until next Sunday. Church, keep your faith. It doesn't matter what the enemy is doing, trying to do to you. Let your faith, your anchor, your, your trust, your hope in God not be moved for in it is your victory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord, amen, make his word good unto you. Whatever promise he has promised you, he who has promised will not fail. It will be on time and make good his word to you in Jesus' name. Until next Sunday. God bless you. Keep the faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.